trimming. After each layer is cured by the laser, the build platform moves down by the height of one layer and the recorder blade completes one sweep of the surface. Once all the layers are complete, the build platform rises back to its original position and the finished part emerges from the resin. This is probably the most dramatic part of the entire process and is fascinating to watch. We then need to prise the part from the surface of the platform with a scraper. Only the support material is in contact with the platform, so there is no need for an excessive amount of care. Scraping or damaging the base isn't an issue. Once this is complete, we then remove the part from the printer and take it to be washed. Washing takes place in a highly controlled environment and full safety equipment must be worn. There are three alcohol baths in total and parts need to pass through each of them. In the first bath, the part is simply soaked in the alcohol which removes the bulk of any excess uncured resin from the surface. Care is taken to ensure that each area of the part gets a good soak. We can then move on to the second alcohol bath where the part is brushed with the alcohol to help further remove any residual resin that is still on the surface. At this stage, the bulk of the support material is broken off by hand. These support columns are designed to be removed so they come away quite easily and the alcohol helps this process. However, the support material will usually not come away completely when removed by hand, so some scraping and sanding will still be necessary later. Now we can move on to the third bath, where more brushing takes place to try and get rid of some of the remaining support material that wasn't snapped off in the second bath. For those difficult to reach places, an air gun can be used to dislodge any remaining excess material and also help dry off the alcohol. The whole part is blasted in this way. The more stubborn support material must be removed by hand. This is done using chisels and other tools and sometimes has to be performed fairly aggressively. Once this is done, a first round of sanding can take place to smooth out the worst of the rough patches. There are several rounds of sanding still to come. But right now the resin is still too soft and care has to be taken not to apply too much pressure as it might deform the part. This is just a preliminary sanding to prepare the part for post-curing and get rid of any tiny parts of the support structures that are still present. SLA printed parts generally need to be post-cured in a UV oven. This is because polymerization of the resin still isn't complete at this stage and the alcohol bath, which made it easier to remove the supports, also softened the part itself in the process. Now it's time to move to the paint room for more sanding and the first coat of paint. At this stage, the small hole covers that were printed alongside the wheel are inserted into their respective holes. Once the paint is applied, the joints won't be visible. Painting is performed under laboratory conditions and full protective equipment must be worn at all times. This is both to protect the health of staff and also to ensure a sterile environment so there is no contamination of the paint surface by hair, dust or other foreign bodies during this phase. The part is first sprayed with a dark undercoat. At this stage the color is irrelevant. This coat is all about preparing the part for sanding. The removable buttons are also covered in this undercoat. Once this has been applied, an extensive round of sanding needs to take place. This is thorough to the extent that the first coat is almost entirely removed. In our case, the steering wheel was sanded for 4 hours. This ensures the surface is perfectly smooth and prepares it for the second round of painting. Now the next coat can be applied. This is still not the final top coat. It serves as a base for the further colors that need to be added. The spray paint used is incredibly fine and great care is taken not to produce any bubbles or unevenness. The buttons are also given the same coat to prepare them for the next round of painting. Once this coat is complete, it's time for the final colors to be applied. This wheel uses three different colors, black, silver and brown. When the silver and brown are being applied, the other sections of the wheel need to be covered in masking tape. This is a fiddly task that requires great patience and precision. A millimeter or two off and paint will be applied to areas where it shouldn't, spoiling the overall finish. Here we see the part fully masked and ready for the silver paint to be applied. 
The unmasked section around the edges will also be painted brown, giving a three-tone finish. Once all the painting is finished, the silver buttons will be affixed and the wheel will be complete. So, this is it. Job well done, I would say.